Here this morning. Thank you for joining us. I am happy to announce that we have Brother Irvin Esh with us this morning, and I'm sure it will be a blessing to uh, hear from Irvin as he shares his uh, story, his testimony of how he met the Lord and, and experienced uh, God's grace in his life. So, Irvin, are you ready to uh, get started here? And if you are, I will uh, pray for you, and we'll open the meeting. Sure. Let's, uh, let's just pause and uh, pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your kindness, and we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus, asking for your uh, blessing, your anointing on this meeting and on Brother Irvin as he shares his story of experiencing your grace in his life. And we ask that you would give clarity. We ask for your uh, grace in uh, sharing this story so that it can bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus and that your will can be accomplished and your kingdom advanced. We thank you for these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, Irvin, uh, you may proceed. All right. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, I, uh, yeah, not not sure uh, how this will go yet, but I want to uh, share what God did for me and what he's done in my life. And if it can help anybody, I, I, I want to share it to show people what he, what he can do, what he does, what he has done. And he can do it for anyone. Um, so with that, yeah, I'll just uh, start with. I don't. I usually don't. I don't remember a whole lot of my younger childhood. Usually, um, I'll start when I was uh, when I was nine. Uh, this was probably one of the things that. Um, impacted me when I was when I was younger um we had so we lived in a double house um growing up my my great uncle lived um yeah he lived there in the right next to us and uh I would spend a lot of time with with him um growing up I spent a lot of time with him out in his barn um he liked he, he shot horses and um, I would help him do that. And yeah, just do a lot of things with him. When I was nine years old, he, he died. Um, that was pretty hard on me. Um, but yeah, that was probably one of the, the, the first things that I usually remember a whole lot of. Um, I was nine at that time. And then, uh, yeah, from there, when I was, uh, I, Twin brothers, uh, Matthew and Michael, um, when I was 10, um, yeah, they would have been six years older than me. And when they turned 16, started joining the youth group, uh, they, they didn't have a whole lot of friends. They got, yeah, they, they got pushed back a lot from their friends, from their friend group there and uh, for, for a while, and they didn't have a whole lot of friends. And I seen that, I was 10, and uh, I remember one day I, I was, yeah, I was thinking about it and I was, I, I made a vow to myself. I said, when I, when I get older, I'm going to do what it takes to have friends and be accepted in the youth group. I'm not, I'm not going to be like that. I'm just going to do whatever it takes to, to have friends 
and to make make people like me. And I think I, I always think that's a lot of the reason why I got into some of the things I did when I was younger. Um, I remember thinking sometimes uh, with the with the path I went down that I probably shouldn't do this, but I always went back to what well, this is what it takes to have friends. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so I think that's why I started a lot of the reason why I started down that that path. Um, but anyway, um, when I was 13, dad started, uh, yeah, I grew up in a home that I, dad was definitely, uh, a Christian. He was definitely a born again believer. Um, and he tried to, yeah, raise his children. Right. Um, he went through books, went out with me when I was, I'm not exactly sure of the age, I think probably from 11, 9 to 11, he, w he went through books, um, parody books and stuff like that. It's not like he didn't explain everything to me and talk to me about it. Um, yeah, I just rejected most of that for the most part at some point. Um, but anyway, when I was, uh, yeah, 13, dad started, uh, and he went into full-time counseling at a, at a retreat and that seemed to take up most of his time. It was, yeah, started in as a three days a week and it didn't last long. He was there five days a week and often went out Saturdays yet. And he would come home evenings and, um, yeah, he, he was coming evenings and he'd be on the phone yet for a couple of hours off until nine, 10 o'clock at night, uh, with people. And, and, uh, yeah, I, I got, I got a little bitter through that. It seemed like he didn't have any time anymore. And, uh, yeah, he, anyway, um, that was when I was 13, 14, I got introduced to, well, I got introduced to pornography a little before 14 and I didn't really get into it till I was 14. I was, I was addicted to pornography. I was watching pornography pretty much regularly as much as I could. Um, and I didn't even really, yeah, it would bother me, but I would just block it out and I would, I was just having fun and, um, all my friends were the friends I was with at the time. We would go riding up in the mountains weekends and stuff from my friends from uh 14 year old school stuff like that and a lot of them had phones and um, smartphones and stuff like that so i i started uh yeah i got my first smartphone when i was 14 as well um but dad often found my phones he would smash them but i just i just get more um but anyway that started that journey uh I turned 16 and um, I went back to the making friends, whatever it took. I was got to the point where I mean, there was a friend of mine that we were often the instigator of our, of our friends. We did a lot of things that I'm not proud of at all. Um, just and d dad at that time, he started trying to reach out to me. He knew our relationship with me he knew his relationship with me wasn't good he tried to reach out make things right and um i just pushed him away so anyway um 17 yeah 16 17 was just having fun um kept myself busy not to think about things and just yeah I uh, turned 18, and uh, the first time I really stopped to think about the path I'm going down in eternity um, was when I was 18. I uh, started noticing my, what is now my wife, and I uh, wanted, wanted to ask her out, and uh, I really made me stop and think where I was at in life. And at that point, I was, yeah, I decided it's time to uh, clean up my life a little bit and be a better person. Um, I did not 
I was not at all ready to surrender my life. Uh, to Jesus or anything like that. I just wanted to clean it up. I still wanted to have fun with my friends that I had, but I wanted to clean it up for the most part, uh, mainly for my girlfriend and um, whatever. Yeah, I, I did start thinking over that time about eternity and where, my, where I was at in life, but try not to think about it too much. And I figured if I clean my life up, I'll be okay. Um, yeah. So that went on. Um, I, you know, I was like with my pornography addiction at the time. It was it was pretty bad, and I was like, "Well, I'll just quit." Um, I, growing up, if I wanted to do something, I did it. If I set my mind to do to do something, I usually didn't quit till it was done, and it's just how how I was used to doing things. And I decided, "Well, I'm just going to quit watching pornography, and that'll be that." And uh, it wasn't quite that easy. Um, I decided to quit and I was determined to quit and it, it lasted for a couple months and it usually got to a point where um, I couldn't get my mind off of it. I could be at work, I could be doing whatever and this this cloud would just be or this, this thought would just be in my mind that and I couldn't get rid of it. I tried, I tried lots of different things. So gave into that again, um, was dating at the time and yeah, gave into that and sort of quit trying for a while again, life goes on. Um, uh, we were, so my dad encouraged me to, um, pray with, on our dates with my girlfriend to pray and to have devotions together. So we were doing that. Um, wasn't doing it out of my heart at all. I was just doing it because, yeah, my dad encouraged me to do that. And my girlfriend appreciated that we did that. Um, so I did that. And there again, I, I still tried to clean my life up on the outside, even while I was watching pornography on a regular basis other things. Yeah, I just tried to make it look good on the outside. I uh, got engaged. And at that point, I was sort of the same thing. I was like, all right, it's time to quit. I'm engaged now. Uh, made a fresh effort to quit again. Same thing. It lasted for a couple months. And I was back in it again. And uh, so that went on till, well, at that point, I was like, I'll just, I'll just wait. Once I get married, I'll be able to able to stop all this stuff. Um, there was, yeah, it was more than just pornography, but we just, yeah. I figured all this stuff will just be easy to stop once, once I get married, um, which wasn't the case at all. Uh, we got married in uh, November of 2020. And, uh, yeah, I, it, it was, it was about two months after we got married that it, it was easy to quit. I didn't think about it barely at all. Um, just newly married and yeah. And then life started being normal again and um, it came back. So that went on. Um, at that point, I really dove into money to get my mind off of other things. Um, I started, yeah, I bought into the family business. Me and my brother were partners there and uh, pretty much just focused everything I had on making money. Um, yeah, put her in the company and I got into dogs a lot. Um, strictly to make money, I didn't like dogs that good. But within, once I decided to make money, I had didn't take me long. I had 14 German Shepherd females, I believe it was something like that. And yeah, um, anything to, to make money, I was really busy. Um, and that went on, uh, September of 21, we had a little girl and, uh, that really made me stop and think again, where I was at in life. Um, I wanted to be a good father. And I wanted to be a good husband as well. And I knew with what I was doing, 
um, that was not going to happen. Uh, I knew. I knew it doesn't matter how hard I try with everything I was in. If I don't quit, I, there's no way I can I can be a good father. So at that point, I I got really really determined to quit. Again, I was trying to do this all on my own. Nobody knew about it. I didn't tell anybody what I was all into. Um, just decided, all right, this is enough. I'm going to quit for my little girl. And that lasted, that determination lasted longer than it had since I was 14. I was, it went about five months, four or five months. And uh, it got to a point again where I could not, I couldn't think anything else. I could be at work. I tried, I tried going uh, running, running a couple miles to get it out of my out of my mind. I bought a, um, I tried, I tried boxing, um, just anything to get get it off my mind, and it it wouldn't leave. So at that point, I gave up. I was like, "This is who I am. Um, there's nothing I can do about it." I accepted the fact that. Uh, hell is where I was headed and there's nothing me or anyone else can do about it. Um, so I, there was a, there was a couple, there was some, some period of time there after I gave up that I kept having these. So at that point, my only goal, my only, I shouldn't say my only one, but the, the only reason I wanted to quit or or the, the main reason was my little girl, but then I started thinking about heaven and hell, and I knew if I don't change something, there's no way I'm, I'm gonna make it to heaven. Um, and I had tried so hard to quit. I didn't think it was possible. Um, I accepted the fact that, that I was gonna end up in hell. Um, yeah, I got very discouraged right over that time. Um, I, I went through the thought process of multiple times of, okay, so I, I knew if I get tempted or if the temptation comes up, I'm not strong enough to withstand it. And I knew if I don't do something different, I'm going to hell. So the end, my thinking was in my head, I thought this through a few different times. It was like, if, if I would, if I would, Right after I sin, if I would repent and tell God I'm sorry, and then kill myself before temptation comes again, because then if it comes that I can't withstand it, I, my thinking was that maybe I could get to heaven that way. Could never quite convince myself that that was the case. Um, so I got to the point where why would I kill myself and go to hell sooner? Didn't really make any sense. So um, at that point. I went everything I had again into money, making money and enjoying life. Um, I say enjoying life, trying to enjoy life. Um, yeah, I, I tried to block my mind out but from work and goals, got into a lot of different business coaches, um, training, took all my time up. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, it it worked. We started doing well. I started making money, and uh, at that point, this was about a year later. Now, um, this would have been summer of twenty two. Our little girl was born in August of twenty one. Um, with where I was at in life, I didn't see any reason in staying Amish. Um, as long as, yeah, there's no, no chance I'm getting to heaven anyway. I was done with Christianity. Um, up to that point, I had, I did read my Bible sometimes. Um, I did pray sometimes, not on a regular basis. Um, but I still wanted to, I, I knew my dad had a connection with God and I did want that. So I tried to get it sometimes up to the point where I gave up. I completely quit all that. I didn't read my Bible ever anymore. I didn't pray. Um, I was, I was done with with Christianity. In my mind, 
I was, I was just done. Um, so I got my driver's license in the summer of 22. Um, I was doing just just got my license. We didn't really we didn't leave. Um, I would drive here and there, work truck or or company vehicles um, when it was convenient, but not that anybody would know. Um, that lasted about a half a year. I was starting to, I, I would work late at the office and I would take a vehicle home after dark, after everybody was sleeping and, and I would go in early again in the morning, 3.30, 4 o'clock before anybody woke up. I did that quite a bit. Um, till, yeah, January of 23 then, uh, we we did leave. We left the Amish, and yeah, that was uh, my wife at the time. First, when we started talking about it, she did she didn't want to, but um, it didn't take long till she was okay with it. And I didn't really know what changed it later. After I got saved, I figured out that she had she was pretty desperate over that time, and. She was praying a lot and she just felt at peace with that. That's why she, yeah, I clearly remember there was a point where she didn't want to leave and all of a sudden she was okay with it. And I didn't really know what happened, but I was fine with that. I didn't really figure out what happened there until later. Um, but anyway, uh, we left in January and I still wanted, I still wanted a church to go to for my wife and my little girl. Um, so we started looking around for a church. We visited multiple churches. And the one church we visited, uh, there was a couple there. We knew of the couple, we knew, we didn't really know them very well. It was, um, yeah. But anyway, they, they started reaching out to us after that, after we were there. You know, we just randomly call us and see if they can come out and visit. And, they they were there a few times just um yeah talking to us about scripture and um i would listen and i knew uh he i knew he had something that i wanted but i didn't think it was possible um i remember thinking sometimes when he left that i i really would love to have what he has um the peace that i you could tell he had and I just really long for that, but in my mind, it's not going to happen. I'm this person and I can't change. And uh, so I would just push it off again. But they didn't give up. They kept reaching out. It was a couple month time. And uh, it was one weekend in March. Um, yeah, they, they came out or they asked if they could come out on Sunday evening. And uh, they came out to visit. And he was, he went through the Old Testament and how that explains baptism, all that. Um, and he was, he went into depth about the meaning of baptism and what it does. And he shared with me some, some things he struggled with um, before he got baptized and how that, how he had victory over some of the, that stuff through baptism. And, uh, he asked me at the time if I want to get baptized, and my first response was, no, I don't want to. Um, yeah, what's the point, was, was my thinking. Um, but then in the back of my mind, I was like, well, he had freedom from some stuff. He had victory over some stuff after he got baptized. Maybe this was something, maybe this would help me. Um, but I wasn't willing to tell anyone. I wasn't going to tell anybody what I was into. I just wanted help. And uh, anyway, I, I agreed to get baptized the following weekend. And in my mind, I was like, if it helps, good. If not, I'm back where I was. So why not try it? Um, I had this little bit, of, little bit of hope there that maybe it would do something. Um, was very doubtful that it would, but I... I was, I hoped it would. 
So that was Sunday's agreed to get baptized the following Sunday. And that week was probably one of the hardest weeks I had for a long time. I couldn't sleep. I, every time I would sleep, I would start dreaming. And by the end of the week, I was really, really frustrated. I was tired and I just wanted to sleep. I, I, uh, I don't know, it was about Thursday, I think. And at that point, I started praying again. I didn't know what else to do anymore. Um, and I just told God, I said, I just confessed everything to him that I was doing. He knew it already, obviously, but just confessed everything. And I told him, I said, look, I want help. I don't think it's possible. But if there if there's any chance that you can help me, or if you're even real, I, I just... Just tell, I just prayed that if if he's real and he if there's any way any hope for me uh, he's gonna have to fix it through baptism because I'm not gonna try. Um, and to me, it, I sort of felt uh, it didn't feel good praying that because growing up you always try to be a better person and um, do the right thing, and I was just yeah, it felt really wrong for me to talk to God that way. Um, told him look i'm not going to try you're going to have to do this if you want if you're real you're going to have to change me so that's that was that week um yeah it was a really long week sunday comes and we went to church had church and uh went down to the lake and when we were down at the lake i had this intense battle inside of me um it felt like somebody was arm wrestling inside of me. Like at one point I actually told my wife, I said, look, I'm not doing this. I can't do this. I'm going to walk away. It was, it was extremely intense. I was, it was like part of me wanted to get baptized. And the other part, it was like, I'm going to get baptized. And I was like, no, I'm not, I can't do this. So that was going back and forth. And at one point I just sort of tried to shut my mind down. I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm here now. And we'll see what happens. So got baptized and I don't really know how to explain that afternoon usually. Um, I felt a calm. So before this, I never liked to sit around. I never liked to just do nothing because I didn't want to think. Um, I did I didn't want to sit around and think. I wanted to be doing something to keep my mind busy. And that afternoon, it didn't bother me at all to sit around and just think. And I felt a calm and a peace that I never had felt before. Um, I was after we got home, I was singing and I never sang. And then we just the songs were just coming out. Like not like it was yeah, I was obviously trying to sing, but yeah, it was something I never felt before. And I was thinking that I didn't really believe it, that it happened. I knew something felt different, but I was like, I don't, I don't know. I was like, I'm not going to tell anybody. We'll see what happens the next couple of weeks to see if this stuff actually, run, actually went away before I tell someone. Uh, this is probably just a phase and I'm going back right back to where I was. Um, that night, Sunday evening night, uh, wake up Monday morning and, uh, my, my wife looks at me and she goes, man, you had, you, she knew the dreams I was having the week before and wake up Monday morning. She goes, you must've had a good dream last night. And I looked at her and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I slept very, very good. Like, I didn't wake up all night. I slept better than I had for a long time. She goes, yeah. She said, she woke up in the middle of the night. I woke her up. She said, I was singing. Uh, I was singing, I have decided to follow Jesus. I was, she said, I was playing the sleeping, but I was playing the singing. And I didn't remember that at all. And at this time, I think that was confirmation for her. I think God did that for her because um, she wanted to believe that at this time, I had tried so many times to change and it didn't happen. She wanted to believe that this was real when I got, when I was getting baptized, but she, with the way I was living my life and the way she knew I was, she was very doubtful that 
I was sincere. So that gave her confirmation at that point, she knew something changed. Um, so I think, I think that's, I always thank God for doing that for her. Um, anyway, um, that was, yeah, Monday morning, wake up. And I read my Bible before I went to work, something I never did. Um, I wanted to, and I would actually, when I went to go to work that morning. I would have rather sat there and read my Bible than I would have went to work, but it was time to go to work. So you go to work. Um, it was pretty weird because I never read my Bible. And even before when I had read my Bible, I did it. I didn't want to, or it wasn't fascinating. It was boring and yeah, not the case this time. Anyway, I hopped in my truck to go to work and, uh, the music I listened to over the time, it was uh, rap, rap, whatever, anything that songs that talked about making money and stuff like that pretty much is what it was. Um, and I hop in my truck, I turn the truck on, I, I start going to work, and my playlist automatically starts playing again. And as soon as it started playing, it was one of my favorite songs, had been one of my favorite songs at the time. I turned it off. I'm like, that stuff's disgusting. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, wait a minute, that's my favorite song. But it wasn't anymore. Nothing I did. I just, I just didn't like it anymore. And I didn't know why not. Um, but I knew something changed. At that point, I was like, okay, something's definitely different. Um, the way I felt, I wanted to read my Bible. This music wasn't attractive at all anymore. Um, I actually listened to gospel on the way to work that morning, which was also something that I didn't do. Um, anyway, at that point, I knew something changed, and I knew, yeah, I knew that God did something for me there, but I still wasn't willing to tell anyone. I was like, I'm going to let it go a couple of weeks and see if this lasts, or if because I hadn't got tempted again at all to do anything really. And I was like, I'm going to wait till I get tempted to tell anyone to see if I'm strong enough to withstand this stuff. And uh, so the next couple of weeks, they were really good weeks. Um, I, I'm a salesperson. I, I go around, I'm on the road a lot looking at jobs. And I would drive around and I would just talk to God. Like he's a person sitting next to me. And sometimes I, I, had, I got emotional. I had to pull over. Um, while I was on the road, it was just a very sweet time. I never experienced something like that before. I didn't even know it was possible. And uh, praying and reading my Bible, um, wanted to read my Bible. It's just, yeah, something that I never experienced before. And it was about three weeks into that, I knew. I hadn't gotten tempted one time. Everything I was into just left. This was about three weeks after baptism. And I felt completely different. I had shared before I went from knowing I'm going heading to hell to at this point, I knew I was saved. Uh, the way I felt and the connection I had with, with God. Um, and to, to explain the difference of that, how that feels, I don't know if I'll ever find words to do that. Um, the, the previous feeling of just complete hopelessness and um, trying to block out thoughts and um, to just peace and um, wanting to sit, just meditate and sit still and pray. And um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. And uh, so at that point, <laughs> I uh, I was like, well, I'm going to tell people what Jesus did for me. And yeah, I started with my wife. I shared everything with her. Uh, it was pretty difficult for a little bit. But um, yeah, God has blessed me with an incredible wife. And uh, back to what Jesus did for me, I think one of the reasons um, God did what he did for me and took everything away, there was there was lots of people praying for me. Um, I didn't either know this at the time till after I shared everything with my wife and, um, yeah, after she knew I was saved. So right at the time when we left the Amish, December, January of that year, 
So I got I got baptized in April. We left in January. This happened in April, uh, about right a year ago now. Um, anyway, she had a lot of days when I was at work that she would just go into the bedroom and just she would spend a long time in there just praying for me. And uh, yeah, um, she never once do I remember that she came to me and told me I need to change. I'm going down the wrong path. She supported me where I was at, did what she could for me. I knew she didn't support the things I was doing, but she didn't tell me to my face. Um, she spent a lot of time praying for me and I didn't notice at the time. Um, so, yeah, I told my wife at that point and uh, went and told my older brother. Um, my older brother had also a lot of, he tried to talk to me a lot of times about the path I was going down with, with money. Um, and I, I, I didn't listen to him at all. I didn't care. Uh, the path I was going, I knew the path I was going down. I didn't care, but I went and shared it with him. And, uh, from there, um, I went and shared it with the couple that have reached out to us. And then we went, uh, my dad lives in Michigan. So took a trip to Michigan and, uh, yeah, I just had a lot of things to make right with dad from teenage years. Um, a lot of times I'd lied to him, different things that I went to make right. That was a very, very good visit. Um, dad had as well talking about people praying. Um, the couple, yeah, a year, two years before that, dad would leave me messages sometimes. Um, just, hey, I'm praying for you. And that's pretty much it. Um, he didn't try to lecture me. He didn't try to tell me I'm wrong either. He just, um, yeah, he would leave voicemails that he's praying for me. And I know he's meant a lot, but yeah. So I went out to Michigan, made that right, made made my things right with dad. And um, there again, this was now May. This was a month later. And it went about three, four months where I had no temptation for, for anything that I had been into, it was gone. And I was, I was amazed. Um, and just continue that relationship with God. Um, then, so in June, end of June, July, uh, me and my wife, we went on a trip out West. And the week before we went out West was really busy. I was trying to catch up on work. Um, do some work ahead a little bit so we can go on the trip. And well, earlier, I'll back up a little bit. After I got saved, um, the route I had been taking with money, I, I reacted to that completely. And I, I didn't even want to work anymore. I was like, what's the point? I want to go tell people what Jesus did for me. And I want to do something for him. What's the point of working? It's just to make money. Um, that's sort of the attitude I had for a while. Um, I, I changed my attitude a little bit towards that. I started, I really neglected my responsibilities at work for a while. And I soon realized that this isn't the right path either. I still need to take care of my responsibilities. Um, but I didn't, I didn't want to, yeah, I didn't care at that point about it enough to yeah, my, my brother got a little frustrated with me, the one I was in business with, because I went from doing nothing but working to not really caring about work. And uh, I did, yeah, like I said, I did change, tried to still take care of my responsibilities. And uh, it, I still feel like, yeah, um, be responsible and take care of what you're, what you're given. Um, but anyway, back to the week before we headed for our trip, I was trying to catch up a little bit, work ahead a little bit, and I was pretty busy and I neglected some of my time in the morning, my devotional time and praying time that week. And towards the end of the week, it was the first time that I was driving and I started getting thoughts again and it scared me. 
um, I started getting, you know, thoughts about pornography again. And it really scared me because I didn't want to go back there. Um, right away, all these, all these feelings of how I felt before came back with that. And I was like, no, no, I, I'm not going back there. And I struggled with that for a few days with those thoughts. And at one point, I just stopped what I was doing. And I just prayed and I told God, I said, I don't know what you're trying to do right now. But I thought this was over. Like, what, what did I do wrong or what, what's going on? And it very, very clearly just this, this very strong thought popped in my head that, well, if you want me to take it away for you, you have to spend time with me. So that was, that was a very good reminder to not neglect my devotional time and my prayer time. And as long as I did that, as long as I, as long as I kept that relationship with Jesus vibrant and spent time with him, those, those temptations were not there. Um, but every time I seen it a few different times when life started getting busy and just wouldn't spend the time like I should, um, the temptations would start to come back. And I could always trace it back when the temptations came to maybe a week before or a couple of days before where I was busy and I had neglected my devotional time. So, yeah, fast forward a little bit to um, what's going on now. Um, so this would have, oh, yeah, this was just this past year. Um, we're in Pennsylvania right now. I don't know if you guys know that, but um, we're planning on moving to South Dakota. Uh, I'm not sure when yet. And that all happened. Um, so I'll back up a little bit again to what I was saying about responsibility that we're so we got back from our West trip and one of the biggest struggles I had uh, the last couple months was I wanted to take care of my responsibilities at work, um, but I didn't want to put my heart back into work and money like I had before. And it was a struggle for me because once I put my whole, once I, if I do something, I want to do it right. And I would go to work and I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take care of my, my responsibilities now. And I would sort of put my heart back into work and I would feel myself. It didn't take long. I would feel myself going down that path again of, of uh, money and just being, yeah, just, just working. And I would react to that and I would come back to that. I'm like, I don't, I'm not going down there again. And it was just this cycle of going around in circles of, not caring about my work to realizing I should probably take care of my responsibilities. And then as soon as I started taking care of my responsibilities and putting my heart back into that, I would just get drawn down the wrong, feel myself getting drawn down that path again. So I was really praying about that the last couple of months, uh, if I'm supposed to get a new job, um, completely quit what I was doing, whatever. I didn't really know. I just wanted something, something that I'm not just a cycle of, reacting in uh, January we went to a uh, two-week Bible school um, in Holtwood and yeah uh, we were there it was two weeks and the third the second Thursday um, Merle Weaver had a topic on the unreached people groups in the world and in the end he played this short video um, about that and i was really touched by this and I, I i just prayed that at that time i just said a prayer and i just told god that with everything we had been dealing i was dealing with as far as the work was and that cycle i said look there's a place you want us to go i just i said please just show us where you want us and we'll go not thinking what i was praying really i was, I was just praying and uh yeah, so that was Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. So at the Bible school, I usually went to 7.30, and then we had some some gym time. I was up in the gym playing volleyball, and uh, Thaddeus, um, from one of the, one of the uh, teachers there at the Bible school, he was from South Dakota, he just comes up to me, and he starts telling me what he's doing in South Dakota, um, and what he, what he, some needs he had. He said he's been praying for someone um, 
he said somebody preferred it with business experience and sales experience. Uh, he just he start he's out beside an Indian reservation out in South Dakota, and he's he's starting a boys program for these boys. And he started a wind and door company, and the wind and door company is taking up too much of his time, and he wants to spend more time with the boys program and doing stuff like that. So he's been praying for somebody to come help him in, uh, um, yeah, everything he, he said pretty much matched me. And while he was talking to me, I got all weak in my legs and I got real hot in my chest. And I didn't, couldn't figure out what was going on. I was like, this is weird. Um, I didn't tell him how I felt. I hadn't known him before that. He didn't know me. He just came up to me and started talking to me about these things. And uh, anyway, um, we were sleeping a couple miles from there. My wife had already went back. So we headed back. And that evening, I just, I, I told, I was praying about this and the way I felt. And I wasn't sure what to do with it. And I just told God that, look, I said, if, if you're trying to tell me to move out there, remember the prayer I had prayed earlier about God showing us where where he wants us and we'll go and i just said if you want us to move out there i said if i'm gonna let you make my wife feel the same way and if she if she feels the same way i'll know it's you trying to tell us to move um that seemed to be the easy way out because i didn't really know what to do with it so i just figured well i'll just do that and if he makes my wife feel the same way then then i'll know um yeah uh, I told my wife the conversation I had with Thaddeus. I didn't go into detail about how I felt, what it, how it made me feel or anything like that. I just told her the conversation that I had while he's going out in South Dakota. And uh, the next afternoon, we were talking about it again a little bit. And, and soon my wife just looks at me and she goes, she said, for some reason, since I said something about South Dakota, she said she can't forget about it and just feels like God's telling her that we're supposed to move out there. That yeah, I was I was a shock. It was a big shock to me because I didn't expect that at all. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Um, yeah, we're planning on moving sometime probably this summer. But I think that's that's about all I had to share. Praise the Lord. Brother, worthy yes. is the lamb. Amen. Worthy is the lamb. Praise the Lord Jesus. Well, yeah, thank you so much for for uh, sharing that testimony this morning. That's a that's a powerful testimony of God's redemptive uh, grace. I would like to uh, open it up uh, for a few minutes for feedback from our audience. If there's anyone on here, uh, you might be able to unmute yourself and uh, maybe ask a question if you have something uh, on your heart or maybe uh, yeah, maybe some encouragement for Brother Irvin. Well, good morning, Brother Irvin. That was a very encouraging testimony. I'm really, really blessed going from darkness to light. That's amazing. Um, now, a question for you. Um, for any, do you have any advice for anyone out there, maybe in our audience or in the future, that will listen to this message if they find themselves ensnared in sin, pornography, and don't know what to do to get free? Do you have any advice for anyone like that? Well, I don't, I don't know if I, so the way I've found it, um, the biggest thing for me was keeping my relationship with, with God, with Jesus vibrant and open and not, not let anything get in between that. Um, and the second thing is find somebody that you can talk to and be accountable with and just share your heart with once a week or once a month or whatever. Um, and don't, yeah, it's accountability and 
Jesus definitely first, and then find somebody you can talk to that you trust and that you don't care to share your heart with. Yeah, thank you for that. Sure. Is there anyone else with a question? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Thanks for sharing, Irvin. That was, uh, I'm always confounded and amazed how God works in mysterious ways. Everybody has a, a story and a testimony that seems to ring true in many ways, yet so different. So it always blesses me. One of the questions I would have, uh, while you were young and with uh and dating your wife did she know your inner battle at that time did she know after you were married or did you no. let her in on no i didn't no. share it with anybody she she knew um she knew something was going on for sure after we were married um but she didn't know what it was hmm yeah, well, I, that's a treasure to have a wife that prays for you. I can hear you loud and clear there. Amen. Amen. Uh, thanks for sharing. That was good. Sure. So, uh, brother, did, did you say that there a week or two after your baptism was the first that you shared with your wife about your porn about, addiction? About three weeks after, yes. That was the first she knew you had a porn addiction. Yeah. Hey, Brother Irvin, I want to say I was really blessed and encouraged <laughs> by your testimony. The um, my mind went to the verse in Romans one sixteen. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. When you realize you can do it, right. I can't do it, and right. God, you're going to have to do it. Right. Just that, just that surrender, recognition of God's righteousness, the righteousness of Christ, <laughs> and your own undoneness. Mm -hmm. That was the thief on the cross. That, and that's the gospel. That's where we have to come to to realize yeah. that that the only power there is for me to get delivered and to get free and get saved is in God. And that was your turning point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, once I just a blessing to hear. Once I gave up and quit trying to do it myself. Um, yeah. Give up. And then God can work. Amen. Yeah, I want to thank you for your courage to share that. I believe it'll be a blessing to to many and God will use it to encourage others as well as he has as he has this morning already. Thank you. Okay. I hope he does. I think this morning we want to give praise to the one who has called us out of darkness into his light. Um, I want to put this out there for anyone that uh, God is calling people to repentance and the way to come to him is through his son, Jesus, whom he has sent to be a light to the world. I don't really know if I can uh, express how this all makes me feel. Um, yeah, I just remember in the year or so before Irvin got saved, Irvin's brother Michael would be sharing his burden about Irvin sometimes, and we would pray for him. Um, the couple from Honeybrook that baptized Irvin's, um, I remember praying with him one time for Irvin, and for some reason he wasn't discouraged about how awful this Irvin guy was. He was uh, really excited about the potential of what God could do with Irvin. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I remember a few key moments where I, looking back, I can just see that you know, things were changing and uh, God was answering prayers. I think that was probably three or four months before uh, Irvin's baptism. Maybe it was closer to six months. 
uh, Ben and Mim Blank and our family had gathered at Herman's brother Michael's on a Sunday morning. And uh, I remember how we prayed for Irvin that day. For some reason, I remember that very clearly. And, uh, yeah, I think God started working things out in Irvin's life. Maybe at that point. And, yeah, it really shook my uh, expectations on how a person is supposed to get saved. Made me realize that you can't put God in a box. Um, I for sure thought that a person would have to confess everything before he gets baptized. Um, I was becoming aware that baptism can be a very significant thing in a person's life. Um, I, I mean, I guess I knew that it's more than just a symbol. But I, I was, yeah, the whole thing caught me totally off guard. I, I knew Irvin wasn't living for Jesus, but I had no idea of his pornography addiction, and neither did anybody else until uh, afterwards. And, yeah, to hear that testimony made me uh, feel uh, unbelievably amazed and betrayed at the same time. But just seeing Irvin walk that out ever since, it, you know, he's not making this up. I can tell you, he didn't tell you all. <laughs> I we are so amazed to see what God is doing. Irvin's wife Sadie has been so brave. It's just I am so awed at what God is doing here. And I I count it an incredible blessing just to be able to witness this. So yeah. Yeah, thank you for thank you for sharing that uh, testimony, Samuel, and and uh, that confirmation. Uh, I I would echo that, and I think with that we will uh, wrap things up this morning. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. Uh, we trust that this uh, testimony can be an encouragement and a blessing to many. Um, Irvin, would you uh, be willing to uh, close out our time with uh, a word of prayer? Sure. Good morning, Heavenly Father. All right, thank you so much this morning for your love and your mercy. Father, I just ask that you would just bless anyone listening to this right now, Lord, just bless them. Thank you for another day that you have given us, another day to serve you, to further your kingdom. Father, I just want to thank you for your son, Jesus, that you gave, that died on the cross, that we can have victory over sin, and that sin has no, can't hold us, Father, that if we, all we need to do is believe in you, and you can save us. Father, I just pray that anyone listening to this, that if they're struggling with sin, Lord, I just pray that you would touch them and show yourself to them that they can have victory over that, victory over the devil. Father, I pray for protection from the devil. Today, as we go about our day, I just pray that you would Fill us all with your spirit and help us to serve you by serving others and furthering your kingdom. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Guide me, oh, the great Jehovah.